A man tried to get face to face with an alligator and now he could face some charges. This is video from Bush Gardens in Tampa, Florida, shows the guy in an alligator enclosure. He jumped over two fences to get there that separates the park visitors from the reptiles. Those fences are there for a reason. Witnesses say he was trying to record video of the gator and got within five feet of one of them. And a man in Hawaii has now pleaded guilty to a charge for allegedly picking up a bison calf in Yellowstone National Park. That caused the herd to reject the calf and park staff then had to euthanize it. The man also has been ordered to pay a $1,000 fine. Prosecutors say he was helping pull the calf out of a river after it got separated from the herd. The park staff says this guy was not acting maliciously, but this is not the first time we've seen humans interacting with wildlife. And in some cases, it's been really reckless. <laughs> right, like that. <laughs> Some would say she had it coming, right? This is video of a tourist trying to pet a bison at Yellowstone National Park. The video going viral after the bison reacts and then charges at the woman with its horns. Here to talk more about the dangers of people and animals interacting with the wildlife. They're there to look at, keep your distance, is Dr. William Sieverud. He's an assistant professor at South Dakota State University's Department of Natural Resource Management, and he teaches large mammal ecology as well. Um, good to have you with us. I mean, this is just people behaving badly, right? Anything else? <laughs> It's it's a mixture of people behaving badly and and you know good intentions also. Uh, it's you you see a, a struggling young animal and you want to help out, but um, it's it's a uh, it's never a good idea to kind of intervene in, in the natural system in that way. And right. getting close for a photograph that is just wrong. Right. I guess the message would be let nature take its course. Right. The calf will yeah. find its way. The herd will find it. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Yes, yes, and that's that. I think there's this this disconnect that people often have with being very concerned for individual animals, but um, having kind of a the the park might have a larger population wide perspective where they want the entire herd of bison to survive and be healthy, but people see an individual animal and get you know their heartstrings pulled and see that they they think they can do something to help, mm. and in this case. Um, it ultimately d ended up doing the exact opposite. So in your opinion, I mean, should there be more parameters set up at national parks? Is there anything that our parks, as we head into the warmer months, can do to combat this and send a strong message about interacting with the wildlife? Well, in, on Yellowstone's, um, to Yellowstone's credit, they, they do have a pledge that they're asking people to take called taking the Yellowstone Pledge, where there's a, a, a list of different criteria that they're asking people to abide by, including staying 25 yards away from animals and an additional 100 yards away from bears and wolves. Um, another one of the things is to practice safe selfies. And that, um, you know, uh, addresses the, the situation with people getting just too close to wild animals for, for the, the picture. Um, so the park does have some of these things in place. It's just getting, getting the public to comply is, I think, the issue right now. Is it happening more or are we just seeing it more because of people taking unsafe selfies? You know, everyone has a camera at their fingertips now with cell phones and everyone wants to, you know, get a, a good shot for their, their social media. So I think it, it might be happening more. In addition, the, the parks are having really a huge surge in, in visitorship that, that has happened over the last couple of years, um, partly in due to COVID, but also just, you know, getting getting more folks out and interested and, and into the, the park system as well. Um, so I think it's a combination of all these factors. Well, and I guess big picture, how does it impact the animals, right? To, to be so close and have these interactions with people over time. I mean, does it change their ultimate behavior? We have seen that where animals will will alter their behavior in response to, to human interaction. I mean, you, you saw in the, the case of the bison calf where the herd ultimately abandoned that calf. Uh, animals might be more aggressive when they are fed human food. They might come to expect that human food and then become problems. And ultimately, it typically ends up with the death of that individual animal. Uh, when, when it kind of loses its fear of humans, 
becomes more or less habituated and, and kind of expects food rewards. And when they don't get that reward, they can become aggressive. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.